Hey everyone, and welcome to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter, that is Tim, and we talk about horror movies on this show. And this is our Valentine's Day special. Oh, so I, sweet. <laughs> I didn't get you anything, Tim. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got me the gift of movies, watching movies, and discussing them. But but not uh, the English language and grammar, apparently. Uh, no. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to talk about the original My Bloody Valentine that was released in 1981. It is a Canadian film. Uh, which, oh. Which, which, funnily enough, I, I think I knew that at some point, but halfway through the movie I was like, you know, a lot of these accents are really verging <laughs> on Canadian here. Like, And then I checked, I was like, oh, it is Canadian. Okay, that makes sense. They're all Canadians, that's fine. <laughs> I'm not just going nuts. I had no idea. They tricked me. <laughs> the church here, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> seems like America to me. That, <laughs> that famous, uh, it doesn't take place in that famous American city, Valentine Bluffs. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm tempted to say that's like 100% made up, but there's always that 1% <laughs> chance that there is a stupid place somewhere called Valentine's Bluff. Oh, oh yeah, there's some ridiculous names. Yeah. So it's like Lawyers Grove, Florida, or something like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like weird stuff. <laughs> so yeah, it's a slasher movie, and I don't think we'll do a spoiler-free section. I don't really see a super. It's a slasher movie. It's uh, it's gonna... holiday theme slasher. Yeah. You can pretty much guess. We're we're going to go through it in happen. order. So if you don't want to know who the killer is, which is a big thing at the end, I mean we won't talk about it till the end. But other than that, yeah. I think we'll just sort of work our way through. And if you like 80s slashers, uh, I'd say this is a pretty good example of it. Um, you know, especially a holiday-themed one. So, if you I, want to know more, then... I would say it's a typical... Like, in terms of quality, I'd say it's kind of standard and not particularly good. But not particularly bad either. It's just kind of... Right, yeah. It's like, you know, it's not as good as a lot of the other ones that you you would recommend to people. It was a, I think there's a reason why... Uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, Harry Warden, the killer... Uh, which isn't a spoiler that's the like th that's who they think it is the whole movie from 20 years ago there was a killer named Harry Warden with a, yeah. a gas mask on and I think there's a reason why the legend of Harry Warden never became the next Jason Voorhees or Michael Myers it's it's yeah. not it's just not where nowhere near as good as those killers or those movies and it's just but no, uh, wait, I, I, uh, let me stop you for a second is it Harry Warden because I thought it was Harry Gordon I don't know if I just misheard it no, it was Warden. Definitely Warden. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was funny, Tim, is I don't even think, like, I ever heard, like... like it's not, um, I mean, I'm looking at it now, to be fair, because like, I, I, yeah. I remembered it, but I don't think I ever heard Gordon in the in the movie. Oh. oh. I, I admit I don't have the best hearing, so yeah, I, I actually often watch movies with subtitles, uh, but I didn't do it for this one, so... That's uh, okay. your uh, long hair coming in there, Timmy. He's covering the ears. You're, you're yeah. mishearing things. <laughs> Oh boy, uh, so I think when I say it's not like a great slasher movie, I mean it's fine, it's not bad, there's a couple of yeah. good moments, there's a couple of fun elements. I, I think what holds it back is, one, I think a lot of the kills are not that great, there's one or two that are kind of fun, but for the most there's, part they're pretty yeah. standard. Yeah, there's a couple that uh, that I really liked uh, that stood out to me. Um, Honestly, but... the best one's probably right at the start. Okay. You know, the, the scene that's so... in the main... And he's, it's like this is like the kind of flashback. Yeah, I guess it's a flashback. Although it doesn't really fit into anything. It's just kind of there so we can have a kill to open the movie with. Uh, we see like two like identical sort of like costumed gas masks like miners in the mines. Oh right, right, right. And for I, so yeah, sorry, I was thinking about when the like um sheriff was telling the story or the mayor or whatever. Oh yeah, no. Yeah, uh, sorry. It's, 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 yeah, it starts off with them in the mines and. Then one of them takes like their their uh, their overalls down and it's like you know a girl in a in a in a bra and I'm like oh yeah because a main's a good place to go have sex yeah so erotic and romantic yes now I had a question about this did she know who she was about to have sex with because everyone well, like looks identical in these yeah. costumes. Well, oh yeah, yeah let's talk about that because I think that's worth mentioning here it, <laughs> which it would. Be, I guess it would be fine if, like, well, if this is the flashback, right? So the, the whole idea is that 20 years ago, uh, there was, like, a cave-in and miners died because two of the superiors decided to go to their, their Valentine's party because they were just that anxious to go. Yeah. 
and one person survived uh but he had to like eat up the other miners to survive for like a week or whatever it was that he was down there yeah. so a year later on valentine's day he went around and killed the uh superiors which is why i don't get where this this girl being killed fits into the story at all it's just kind of random and doesn't relate to anything that anyone says in the movie yeah, and it's hard to tell if he was going to kill her at first or if he, like, was just, you know, driven crazy by her little tiny heart <laughs> tattoo. Yeah, she's got a little heart tattoo on her boob, and that seems to <laughs> set him off. Uh, but you'd have to assume that she knew who she was with and that they were she was yeah. all full of having sex. And then, because he's, he, he's not undressed yet, he's still got his mask and his overalls on. And when he sees the heart on her boob, he just kind of pushes her back onto a pickaxe that's behind her. Yeah. Or maybe not be a pickaxe, it may just be like a sharp thing sticking out the wall. They're not mine. Yeah. Dangerous things. And <laughs> it, it looked pretty cool. It's worth mentioning as well, we watched the extended director's cut of this, which had a couple of seconds extra gore footage here or there. And you could tell it was extra because every time it went to the extra stuff, uh, the, the image quality, like it was notable. Like it was a lot more scratchy. It was a lot more old school film yeah. stock looking. Because uh, it's not been kept up as to the same extent. Makes sense. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so there's a couple of seconds of extra. Uh, <laughs> I guess we'll call it penetration <laughs> in this case. <laughs> uh, but that's how the movie starts, and I don't I don't get where this fits in with anything because when we find out later the backstory from the the crazy bartender who's old and is like, kids, they'll all be killing yeah. you. You shouldn't have a Valentine's <laughs> party because they keep making this point. It's the first Valentine's party they've had in twenty years because of this murderer that they had 20 years ago even yeah. though it was even though when we hear the story about what happened it was clearly just a revenge thing for the two you know superiors that let everyone die like that, that's yeah. all he killed as far as they say except this girl which we see in this one random scene which is never <laughs> referenced or brought up yeah. yeah no i have a lot of questions uh about this town <laughs> um unless actually now i'm thinking about it that scene that starts probably present day that could make sense and it's who the killer turns out to be, and he's taken this girl down there and killed her. And it's just a random kill before anything else happens. But yeah, yeah I guess I'd, that, I'd buy that. Yeah, that makes more sense. It's still random, though. It yeah. doesn't really tie into anything else, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, what are you saying, Timmy? Hmm. <laughs> just uh, I have a lot of questions about this town and how it works. Like, like first of all, I want to know, do they get this like crazy about every holiday? Or is it specifically Valentine's Day, especially because the city is named after Valentine's? Like, because, like, everywhere you go, everyone's talking about this dance, which I didn't even know. Yeah. Like, I guess maybe it's, it's more of a small town thing. But, like, you know, I, I grew up in, like, a relatively small town. And we had, like, school dances, but not, like, big town well, dances actually, that, that, everyone... Yeah, that, that, this is the big thing I had. is that, So they're talking about this dance, and I'm like, all right, fine. They're having a dance for Valentine's Day. Sure, whatever. But later on, when the, the sheriff and that and the mayor say, right, we're cancelling the dance because Harry Warden's <laughs> keeps sending people valentines saying that he's going to kill people because there's a valentine's dance. So they cancel the dance. And then, like, T, their main characters are TJ and Axel and Sarah, who's a sort of central love triangle. Normally I'd complain there's a love triangle, but it is a Valentine's set movie, so it, it makes sense that there's a, a romance kind of thing at the centre of it. But... They're like, oh, we can use the mine. We'll use the... And they don't actually mean the mine itself, which is why I thought they said it first. They they mean just the sort of the rec room that they have up top. But it's, it's, oh, it's, yeah. got, a pool, it's got a pool table in it. It's like a little sort of common area. And they're like, yeah, we're going to have a party. And they all cheer because they're having a party. And I'm like, you're not high school students. You're all like in your <laughs> mid to late 20s working... Because the, all the guys are all workers in the mine. They, they, they all have jobs. Yeah. They all have their own cars. Uh, I don't know what the, the women are doing, but they're, they're, all we see them doing the whole movie is like setting up the dance hall. <laughs> yeah. That's their thing. But they're all adults. I'll, I'll... You can have a party any time you want. You're growing people. You can just do it. You don't have to get permission. You don't have to wait for a holiday. You can... In fact, not only that, when they go to the rec room and they have the little party and they're all like, yeah, we're having a party and they're having beers and stuff. I'm like, this is the exact same as the three scenes we had of you guys in the bar. You're doing the exact yeah. same stuff. <laughs> also it's weird because like valentine's day is like the one day of the year where like you know your significant other would probably be like hey let's not hang out with all your douchebag friends let's have <laughs> <laughs> like can we have like one romantic day <laughs> as opposed to like oh let's all get drunk and hang out and then let's not even get to the the fact that not only the girl at the start of the movie but there's several people in this movie who seem to think having sex 
and mining areas is attractive. Uh, oh, I, I have a theory that these like miners are just like the horniest people alive. But, like, but that I, opening I, okay, scene... I, just, I, I want to point out here though, before, before we say anything else, we are saying miners in reference to right, people right. who work in mines. Because it sounds, because when you say it quickly, it sounds like you're saying miners as in kids. Yeah. So say mine so, workers. <laughs> so so Tim did just not say a bunch of horny kids, right? Let's just right, clarify right. that, right? Continue. But but like even like that kind of like like first opening scene where like they're all like you know like punching out for the day and they're all just like running from the mines. They can't wait to get out of there. And then like when we first see them like going into the like dance hall or, or whatever where the women are like the women look scared. They're almost like taken back as these men just like rush in. <laughs> Like ready to grab them. Yeah, and they all kind of pair up really quickly. We realize that they're all in couples, and it's like, all right. So every cat, so every single person in this main is in a relationship with someone who are all friends as well. There's, there's no. It doesn't feel like a town. It, feel, it does feel like school. It feels like a, it's, it's, it feels like it's maybe a high school movie. And these are all the kids that have all paired off. They just all happen to actually be people yeah. who are, are adults with jobs and stuff. It's and mind it, school. And it feels weird. It feels like the. I don't know. Everything about it, like the, their entire attitude. Again, I hate to go back to this, but the whole we can have a party, yeah, on Valentine's. Like, you're adults. You can do this whenever you want. <laughs> oh, and let's not even get started on the fact that halfway through the movie, when they're having their party, some of them, for some reason, some of the, the girls want to go down into the actual main for some reason. Oh yeah. <laughs> It'll be fun. Let's go down and explore. It is, like... I mean, it must have just been, like, you know, the producer or director or whatever is like, hey, guys, we got access to this mine. Let's make the most of it. You get one couple who go and try and have sex where uh, like all their outfits are hanging. It's a kind of... I don't even know what you call the area. But they try and have sex there. One of the couples who goes down with the group that goes into the mine goes, oh, let's sneak off and have sex down here. Yeah, in a mine! We're, like... <laughs> There's lots of locations you're not supposed to have sex that people have sex, and I get the the appeal, you know, the classroom. Yeah, everyone's you know most guys have a teacher fantasy at some point in their lives. Uh, some people like doctor or nurse fantasy, so a hospital is another place you might sneak <laughs> off and have sex. Sure. You know, an office maybe. Like there's lots of places where I get a couple sneaking off and having sex. A mine is not one of them. There is yeah. nothing. <laughs> It's filthy and not in a yeah. a sexy filthy way. It's just filthy. It's yeah. It's like gross. It's uh. It's got to be uncomfortable. <laughs> like I, I don't know. Like don't what this. That. Like why? I'm sure these people have nice comfy beds <laughs> at home. Yeah, go have sex in a bed. It's again. <laughs> this is the thing. You're adults. You have homes where you can go and have sex. You have homes where you can have parties if you want to. Yeah. You're not high school kids. You don't have to sneak off to weird places. <laughs> Oh, God. And not that this is like a big gripe or anything, but did we ever actually find out what they're mining? Is it just. I don't think so. <laughs> I, I guess. I mean, <laughs> I don't think they ever actually say. Um, okay. Just curious. <laughs> it, I mean, do it, it does lead to some fun. Even though the, the reasons they get down there is stupid, at least the last like 40 minutes, half hour of the movie where they're down in the mines and they're running around from the killer. Like, that stuff is yeah. kind of fun. Like, that's, like... Oh, certainly, yeah. This is why they've chosen this location, so they can have this, and they can have them chasing us through tunnels. Yeah, and I do like that the, like, um... You know, like, the costume for the killer, like, this mining suit, I think is, like, a pretty cool costume. You know, like, when yeah. it comes to, like, a slasher movie, you know, you want some type of gimmick I, or something. I, I think the way it's filmed kind of lessens it, but you're right. Like, as a costume idea, it's a pretty strong one. There's nothing yeah. wrong with it. Uh, and you can tell most of the budget went into the mines as well, like, whether they were on location or they'd built sets for some of it, and there's a one or two parts I think they definitely built sets for. I, You can tell that's where they put their money, and it makes sense, because the acting's not particularly good. There's other parts <laughs> where I think they... Like, I don't think, think it feels... I mean, it's obviously a cheap slasher movie, but it's not, like, super... It's not, it's not the cheapest of cheap. But there's a couple yeah. of specific things. Like, one thing I noticed is that the sheriff and his deputy don't have police badges, <laughs> and like you know and some, at first I didn't think anything of it because you know sometimes they wear them on their belt or they have them on their jacket that they're not sure. wearing or something like that but at no point do you ever see the sheriff or his deputy with a police badge but what the only thing they actually have is they've got a patch on their arm that's been sewn in and it kind of looks like someone's sewn it in like 
Yeah. An, an amateur's done it. Like they've just taken up a, a generic police badge and sewn it into the the fabric of their shirts. Um, just stuck one thing, um, you know, not that I would necessarily try to defend that or anything, but if I did have to think of an explanation, um, it could maybe possibly be like it's such a small town that you know everyone knows who they are. They don't need to, you know, get all gussied up and stuff when they go yeah. out. Not, not that that's an excuse or anything, but if I did have to think of a reason, maybe something along those lines. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Actually, speaking of weird police things, this, this isn't a budget thing. If anything, they went over the top with this this expense. <laughs> there's a scene uh, before the party stuff. Uh, it's the main girl, Sarah. There's a scene with her just sort of walking around at night uh, that has no purpose, really, because we don't really see her go where she's going or where mm-hmm. she left. She's, it's just a scene of her walking outside at night. And it's just, it's an excuse to have some creepy music and like, oh, the killer might jump out. And he doesn't. But she runs into the sheriff at the end of the scene. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because he's got a flashlight, right? And mm. it is the longest flashlight I have ever seen. <laughs> and obviously you get, you, get, you get big like flashlights and torches and stuff. But what I mean yeah. by this is that it's a very, you know, that classical thing. If you were going to draw a flashlight, it would be a very... So a thin cylinder with just the little bit that goes out at the end for the light. And right. that, that's your typical classic looking thing. It's just one of those. But the actual length of it is like two foot. <laughs> I didn't really notice that. I have to go back and look at that. Yeah, it was huge. And all, all I could think yeah. was, man, there's a lot of batteries in that thing. Maybe it's just so it can last <laughs> a long time. But Jesus Christ, yeah. it was huge. That's just what was sticking out to me as I was watching this movie. Now, uh, I did really like um, the sheriff and the mayor and stuff uh, in this. Uh, I like that, you know, might be like a, kind of a trope, but I do like whenever there's, you know, like a city official or something that keeps warning people like, no, we got yeah. to shut this down. Yeah, they, they, it's, they, it's all happening again. Uh, they, were, they were okay. Their fear of it was kind of fun. Uh I particularly enjoyed when they, they tried to call it the mental hospital or whatever that had Harry Warren. Oh, yeah. And he's trying to get an answer on the reception. He's like, hey, it's been 20 years. We don't know where he is. I mean, t- who knows? And he's just like getting so angry on the phone. Well, to be th- fair, like they should have better records. They should. They should. <laughs> uh, uh, fuck, what are you going to do? I, I don't want to point out, see the, the bartender who keeps warning them, oh, you shouldn't have a Valentine's party. And he's the one who tells the backstory and stuff. So yeah. he, he, does, he gets killed and he... But before he gets killed, he's actually setting up a trap because he's like, oh, these damn kids aren't... Uh, even though they're all adults, like I said. But he's like, these damn kids... I mean, I suppose they're still kids compared to him because he's like 65, 70 or yeah. something like that. But he's like, ah, these damn kids not heeding the warning. Oh, I'll show them good. And he sets up a trap. And it, how he how he's like sure that uh, the, the, the current killer, Harry Warden, is wearing the, the gas mask and the outfit, I don't know. But he does. So he sets up this trap where he's got like... I guess, I don't know what he's got the actual outfit on, maybe a mannequin or something, but he, he set up a door that when the door opens, you see like the mask and the, the, the overall, and it's, he's got this sort of this fake arm rig to like the pickaxe to come down to scare them. There's so much rope on it, it's obviously really fake, but I want to point out just how excited he is about his <laughs> practical joke. Because he, 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 sort of, he hooks it up and he, he sort of opens the door to test it, and the arm comes down really slowly and unconvincing, and he starts... Yeah. Heck, like cackling of laughter he's like so amused by it and i was like okay fine he's, he's proud of his joke he closes the door and then he he opens it again and he starts laughing he keeps laughing and then he he opens it he shuts it opens it again he's still laughing and then he, he walks away a couple of feet he's still laughing he's like oh i need to see this one more time and he, he goes back <laughs> now obviously at this point i'm like all right so the killer's going to be standing there yeah. when he opens the door right fine i get what that's why you've done it i don't understand why he checks it <laughs> three times in a row <laughs> laughing hysterically it's not that funny but i don't know these small towns you gotta get your kicks <laughs> where where you can because that's that's the, i think that's the big problem in the movie is that a lot of the characters <laughs> feel really fake because they, they just keep doing things and making decisions and acting unlike human beings or unlike adults in a lot of situations the, the, there's not a ton of depth to them they don't yeah, like they're fake. You know, they don't really yeah. feel real. It doesn't it feels like everything they're doing is you know in purpose, you know, to the movie and not necessarily like you and know what someone would actually do in that situation. Yeah, I think that's the other big reason when I say because obviously I'm kind of ripping it apart here, but I, I did have fun with it. it oh yeah, it, I'm just kind of like, you know I'm going through the stuff and the reason why I would say it's like lesser than say because it's not like the Friday the Thirteenth sequels are 
great movies. They're just fun. Sure. <laughs> but I think the yeah. reason why those succeed more than this does, outside of some of the kills, is honestly, is the characters. I think the characters are very... Not that the characters in Friday the 13th are deep by any means, because they're not. They're, they're paper thin. <laughs> but they, they're they all usually likable to an extent. And yeah. here you have a couple of the stereotypes, but the problem, or the archetypes, but the problem is, is that uh, Howard, who's the you know, the practical Joker character that a lot of these slasher movies have, is maybe yeah. the most annoying practical Joker character I've ever seen. Oh, without a doubt. <laughs> he is so irritating. Every single word that comes out of his mouth made me want to smack him. It was horrendous. He he's wondering why you know that one girl won't go out with him, but it's like so obvious. You're you're so annoying. Yeah, you also won't leave her alone. It's bordering yeah. on stalking. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, but he's really annoying, and the the main three characters, their entire thing, like it's a love triangle. You know, uh, TJ left and came back. He's also the son of the guy who owns the mine, uh, and his ex girlfriend Sarah is now with Axel. So <clears throat> TJ keeps walking into scenes, and he keeps sort of staring at them and laughing whenever Axel does something stupid or says something wrong. And it just creates this really awkward tension. And I think he's supposed to be the hero. I think he's the one we're supposed to be like, oh, he's our main character. He's the one we're rooting for. But honestly, he's kind of a creep the entire time. The way he talks to her, the way he stares at her, the way he sort of drags her off to have a conversation at one point. Everything about him, it's not creepy in a serial killer way. It's just creepy in a, you're a, you know, you're, you're obsessed and you're not attractive yeah. remotely in your actions. It's just, there's nothing about them that's likable. Yeah, no one really comes off great in this mm. movie. If if I did have to pick a favorite, it'd probably be the mustache guy. <laughs> but Yeah, mustache guy is at least kind of fun to an extent. Yeah. <laughs> he just has some energy. He's, he's, it's basically a simple case of fat people are jolly. And sure enough, yeah. he's, he's jolly. <laughs> um, <laughs> kind of looks like the Pringles guy. <laughs> A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> so that, that's probably the big problem, and as a result, they end up having this was supposed to be tension throughout, but it's just them both. Because at one point, Sarah actually says, "Oh, you're both acting like jerks." I'm like, "No, you're right. They are both acting like complete that kids." Yeah. Neither of them are coming off as remotely likable. They're just coming off as crybabies. It's really weird. <laughs> so it all builds up, of course, to the get to the main. They get down in the main, and it's uh, Sarah goes down with a uh, jolly fat man and his girlfriend Patty. Uh, who, honestly, I thought was fairly likable as well, up until a point, and then she became the annoying character who constantly kept saying, oh, I can't go on any further. Yeah. Oh, I'm just going to break down here and not move. It was like, shut up. Oh, we need to climb a ladder to get out of the mine. Oh, I've got, I've got a few heights. I can't go up any higher. Oh. Yeah. So. That, that, that was really annoying. She was, she was likable enough until that portion of the movie. And then she just kind of dies randomly. Yeah. <laughs> Which is uh, part of, part of the problem, and then this is more the the thing where the characters were making sort of dumb choices. Is so TJ, what once a couple of people get killed up top. In fact, one of the murders up top was really really bad. Uh, there's a guy who we're introduced to at the party who we've never really seen before, and he mentions, "Oh, I want to get out of this town," which is basically his entire characterization. And he's like, "Oh, I've got the munchies." So he goes into the the kitchen, and there's like a a big pot uh, boiling hot dogs, oh, cooking, yeah. and. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with the killer sneaking up behind him and dipping his head into the, the boiling water, right? That's In concept, that's a fine kill. But it just, like, he's just there, and then it cuts to his head, and the, like, it's edited really poorly. It's like they forgot to get a shot of, like, the killer sneaking up behind him. It just cuts to his hand already on his head, like, pushing him in. And then it's over in, like, five seconds. It's actually, for, for as quick as his introduction was and how much we little we actually seen of him, the death was still shorter. It was kind of weird. Yeah, and it's just, I don't know, it's just kind of silly being, like, boiled and drowned in hot dog water. <laughs> yeah. like, like, he's dying as these, like, hot dogs are floating around his head. But basically, once they, uh, they, they discover that there's been kills, uh, Axel and TJ decide to finally team up and say, right, we need to go down and save Sarah. Oh, and the other ones too, but mainly Sarah. We need to go down <laughs> to the mines and save because the killer might be down there. So they go down and they find them, and some of the the the, the ones we've barely like know about have died. Like they've, they've been killed off camera annoyingly. Uh, the couple that go out sneak away to have sex get killed off camera. I'm like, come on, they've got a big corkscrew screw through them. I wanted to see that, you <laughs> bastards. But they they basically they go to the the elevators right, and like, oh crap, the killers uh, smashed the controls. We can't use this. We're going to have to climb. So they start climbing the ladder, 
And this was where I was talking about Pat. He's like, oh, I've got a fear of heights. I can't go up any further. They get so far up the ladder and a body that the killer's already killed drops down. And they go, oh, crap. Go back down, go back down. So they also go back. I'm like, why are you going back down? <laughs> it's just going to trap yourself further. Uh, yeah, and I think the reason why it stuck out to me is because I think what they're going for is, oh, we think the killer's at the top of the ladder, so we have to go back down. The problem right. is, though, is that when the, the body appears, Axel's at the top, it looks like he's the one who knocks it out of the... Which actually makes sense, given the later revelation, but it actually looks like he's the one who like bumps it or whatever that makes it fall. Yeah. So all I could think is, no, 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 the body was just there. Keep going, you idiots. So yeah. but no, they go back down and they go, oh, but they try to find the other way out where the carts were and they go there. And that's... It basically just... Uh, Axel disappears. He sort of... He appears to die off screen, but of course he turns out to be the killer. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah. Uh, and the, the final's kind of weird. I think they were trying... Oh, I, I think like up until this point, did you get the feeling that they're maybe trying to make you think that TJ might be the killer? Yeah, I think the movie was trying to make you think it was more likely to be him. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> they, they get to the cart bit and he start, he's trying to start the cart. And they actually they have what is should be a kind of fun sequence because they get the carts moving and TJ mm-hmm. and Sarah jump on it and then the killer like comes up behind and like grabs onto the back and I'm like, oh great, we're going to get a chase sequence on a main cart. This is, this is fun. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't last very long though and it, it's kind of hampered by the fact that the, the start of it, the killer jumps out and he just kind of stands there staring at them and I feel like, <laughs> no, why don't you just have him come out at the last possible second so it felt like he was constantly just behind them. It feels really stupid because he just kind of stands there with his pickaxe and waits yeah. for it to start moving before he pursues. So the, the, the pacing of it feels kind of weird enough. Yeah, it could have been exciting, but yeah, it's just kind of slow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a case of where this idea is really good, but the filmmaking yeah. kind of ruined it to a point. Uh, and then, then they fight into a sort of small, dangerous bit of the, the mine. And at this point, the sheriff's found out about stuff because the other party goers have all left, and he's brought the cavalry, and they're all coming down at the mine. And uh, Sarah pulls the killer's mask off. In fact. One bit of stupidity I really want to point out. Sarah, you dozy cow. Mm. So just before they go into the little bit where they find out who it is and all that. Uh, so Killer's got the pickaxe and mm. TJ is struggling with them. He's, you know, trying to hold it off and Sarah picks up a big shovel, right? And mm-hmm. both the Killer and TJ are kind of on the floor on their knees, like wrestling or whatever. Mm-hmm. And Sarah, instead of just hitting the Killer with the shovel when he's distracted by TJ just hands TJ the shovel instead. <laughs> what? Yeah. Um, Hit him! Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't think there's any defense for that. I, I just, and especially since in the next scene she hits some of the rocks, so she's clearly capable of <laughs> having the thought, oh, maybe I should hit him when he's distracted. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I, I don't want to be one of, because obviously lots of people watch horror movies and they constantly say, oh, why are the characters doing this? This makes no sense. I would yeah. I would do much better in this situation. I'm not trying mm-hmm. to get at that. I just, the, the, some of the decisions they make are so, so, just such the opposite of what they should be doing. It just doesn't make much sense. At least usually when the girl runs up the stairs, it's usually because the killer's blocking the access to the front door. And right. I at least buy the, the, the... Okay, whatever. Uh, maybe still a little bit silly, but not as silly as some of the stuff in this. It seems like something like someone <clears throat> like could have easily said like when they were shooting this, like, hey, why don't I just hit him with the shovel or something? Hmm. It's, it's strange. Yeah. Uh so yeah, that's kind of the weird thing. I I I think the movie obviously the movie ends with uh, it, it it kind of caves in a little bit, and the, but mm-hmm. Axel's still alive in the other end, and he he seems to have lost an arm, and he's like, oh, me and Harry Warden will be back, mm-hmm. we'll be back, and then it fades to credits as a oh, sequel bit, and then yeah. there's never a sequel. Actually, I kind of like this ending, just you know, seeing him underneath the rocks, cutting off his own arm. I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Oh yeah, the, the arm cutting off skill. It's just kind of funny because yeah. I know there's no sequels, so them teasing right. it at the end is just kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I mean, obviously we, we've kind of just ripped it apart and like, told mm. you everything that's kind of wrong with it. Mm. Uh, the suspense is kind of lacking. There's not really a whole lot of that throughout the movie. The killers just kind of just kind of feel like a bit of a whimper, usually, more than anything else. The, 
obviously you get the uh, the corpse of the old lady in the the washing machine is pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. Um, I really liked the kill where, um, like they had all the suits were like dropping down from the ceiling. Mm. I thought that was like a pretty cool visual. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of other ones. Yeah, I, I'm like you mentioned before. There isn't like um, you know, really like a ton of standout ones. Um, you know, Mustache Man is getting uh with the nails in the head, which I don't know eh, was a little lackluster. Like I feel like it could have been cooler, but it just seemed very like you know you get like two in the head and then it kind of like falls over. Yeah, it's it's obviously the the way to look. Like... Like a lot of slasher movies in the early eighties, they wanted to make bank on all this, like the boom from Friday mm. the Thirteenth, and they, they they made a serviceable movie that had a couple of fun moments. I, it's not a bad movie; it's an easy enough watch. It, it's just it's not really good either. It's very. Yeah. It's not like there's a lot of other slasher movies I would recommend long before I get to this one. This would be far down the list. Well, the the one thing I, I think that it does have going for it though is the fact that it's Valentine's themed, and you know there isn't a ton of, or at least not to my knowledge, like I can think of maybe like three or four you know Valentine themed movies. Um, That's true. So I, it's, it's, it, think, may, it may be the best one to watch on Valentine's Day. Although there's yeah. probably other ones that we've not discovered yet that may be better. But sure. Yeah, but I, I'd say that is like you know one thing that it, it does have going for it. Um, without that. Honestly, it'd be pretty forgettable. Yeah, but uh, you know, it, 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 I did have fun though. I, I thought there was like some, you know, charming stuff and you know the cheesy uh, '80s slasher. Yeah, anyway. like the cheesy stuff was fine. Like there's the fact that everyone's obsessed with this dance. As much as I was complaining yeah. that it was really un, unnatural, it was at least kind of mm-hmm. funny. Like you know, there was a scene where uh, Patty and Sarah are just walking down the street, and mm-hmm. they're just talking about how excited they are for the dance. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> you're not in high school. <laughs> You can do this whenever you want, you idiots. But as much as I'm complaining, it was it was a source of amusement because I was constantly kind of mm-hmm. chuckling about it. So, yeah, I did really like the scene too, where uh, I think uh, I, I keep forgetting. Uh, no, I think it was the mayor who gets like you know that Valentine's chocolate box. And he's all excited, like, "Oh, no one ever gives me a Valentine's." And then when he opens up in the car, it's a human heart, and he starts freaking out. Yeah. Also, there's a really weird like thing in this scene where I don't know if I'm assuming that they didn't really plan on this, but like the cop car stops and turns around, and as it turns around, this dog starts chasing. Yeah, the car. yeah. It's because uh, it's yeah because he gets the Valentine's and he doesn't open it until he's in the car with the sheriff, and they're driving to wherever they're going, and he opens it, and as soon as he sees it's a human heart, the sheriff does like a 180, stops and does a 180, and this dog runs out from the side and starts chasing it. And all, yeah, you're right. All I could think was, oh, th- this is the sort of thing that just happened by accident and they kept yeah. it in because it looked good. <laughs> I don't think they planned that. I think the dog was an accident. No, no, no way. Like, I wondered if they were just, like, shooting on some random street and, like, someone's dog just came out there. Like, I'll just keep going, keep going. Yeah. Nah, that, that makes sense, I think. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's my bloody Valentine. It's a perfectly watchable 80 slasher, but not an exceptional or... You know, if I was recommending stuff, I'd be recommending a lot of other ones before I get to this. But it's not—it's not a bad time either. So, um, if you need to watch something on, on Valentine's Day, this this would probably be the one to go to. But other than that, there really isn't much reason. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So as far as ratings go, uh, Timmy, what what would you give this out of the old ten? Um, I think I'll give it a, a, a still a fairly decent one, uh, despite all its flaws. Uh, I did find you know a lot of it to be charming and enjoyable, and uh, I did have fun. And it doesn't really drag. I thought like, you know, there, there's never any point where I was like really bored or looking at the clock. So uh, I will give it a pretty decent six point five. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go a little bit lower, even though I kind of agree with what because I think if you're a fan of slasher movies and you like to watch a lot of them. You'll enjoy it for this being a slasher movie that's got all the tropes and it's got all the things. It's just mm-hmm. not a standout of the genre. And I, when I say standout, I don't mean right. like the, the obviously Halloween looks a great film. I don't even mean that a standout in that sense. I just mean it's not a standout in the same way that a lot of other ones are really good fun. This is just kind of uh, mm-hmm. typical. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with a five point five. I think I think it's mm-hmm. I think it's just basically average, but with just a couple of little couple of little tidbits that maybe make it not bang on five. So 
you know, 5.5 out of 10 for me. So there you go. That's uh, my buddy Valentine. Uh, so happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Uh, ho- hopefully you've enjoyed uh, our discussion of this slasher movie. And don't hopefully worry. you got out of the mine early. You got to go to that dance with yeah. your, your guy or gal. And and I, I think that that's regardless of what you're hearing when I say this, I think it works for both versions of the word. Don't have sex with minors. <laughs> Whether it be, you know, miners who mine and mine shafts, or whether it's kids, don't have sex with either. Words to live by. (laughs) Advice from this episode of Screens After Midnight. (laughs) Oh dear. Uh, Don't worry, guys. If we ever do Valentine's cards, that will be the first one. (laughs) Don't have sex with (laughs) miners. Yeah, yeah, so don't worry, guys. We're actually going to have a regular episode later this week as well. It's going to be later, of course, because we had this one at the start of the week, but we are going to have a new movie review. Uh, later on in the week too so you can look forward to that uh obviously check out the fact that me and tim do weekly tales from the crypt reviews plus also on the channel you can find other movie reviews for old stuff uh, me and connor just did dune and godzilla on 121 in flux uh, plus a bunch of tv reviews and the weekly comics podcast so check all that stuff out let us know what you thought of uh, my bloody valentine if you've seen it in the comments below and yes of course we are aware there's a remake which is probably going to be the valentine's movie for next year that's that's not a lie but yeah. uh <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, let us know what you thought. Like and subscribe, all that stuff helps us out a lot if you do. Thank you very much for watching, guys. We will see you next time.